He's opinionated, outspoken, and ready to take a stand on today's Red Hot Issues. He's my good friend, <laughs> Bill Maher. Get ready, because he's joining me for this edition of Politicking. Welcome to Politicking. I'm Larry King. Joining me, one of my favorite people who's never afraid to say what he wants, the hosts of Real Time with Bill Maher and HBO, the one and only Maher himself. And by the way, in addition to Real Time, <laughs> Bill will be at the Murat Theater in Indianapolis on May 31st and on June 7th at the Coronado Theater in Rockford, Illinois, west of Chicago. I work the country, Larry. <laughs> you know I do. All right, let's get right into current issues. None more current than Mr. Sterling. Now, I heard that you mm. have attack the fact that he was taped. But, yeah, that's, yeah. But I know the ends don't justify the means, but this is absurd. Well, you know, it'd be good if we could keep two thoughts in our head at the same time. You know, no one forgives the racism. It's nice we've reached a place in America where that's not even debatable. Nobody stands up for the racism. But, you know, the Fourth Amendment isn't beanbag. No, I get it that he's in a kind of a quasi-public situation there with the team. It's, it's not, it's its own, not public, but it's the, uh, the other owners can kick him out. Correct. But what I was saying, and a lot of people, interesting, I almost never get kudos from both left and right. Both left and right liked that I said, you know what, if you can't to your own girlfriend in your living room without losing your property, then what is the Fourth Amendment? Because the Fourth Amendment is the one that says we should be secure in our homes, secure in our property, secure in our persons. And, um, you know, racism is bad, and so is losing the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, so what do you do when it balances? But once it's out, the owners have no way to go, right? I mean, they can't say, well, yeah, we shouldn't have taken no. them, but what do we do? Right. So no, I mean, owner, what would well, they, they would, I mean, I had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the week before, and I said, you know, everyone's saying how brave Commissioner Silver was. Well, he wasn't exactly brave. I'm not saying he did the wrong thing, but it's not brave when you do something that every single person says you should do. <laughs> brave is going against the grain. The brave is we're keeping him, the, and I don't care what you think. Right. The owners <laughs> wanted to get rid of Sterling because he's going to hurt them for the business. The players would have just revolted. It's a majority... Oh. African-American league. 80%. So, so, you know, it wasn't brave, but it was perhaps the right thing to do. I'm sure it was the right thing to do, I guess. Why do you think, it, who's advising him on doing other appearances? Because a foot in the mouth is a classic. I, actually, I think, judging from the Anderson Cooper interview, yeah. that's actually going to help him because now people are just going to think, well, this guy is... Pathetic. is the, it, it's pathetic, dementia... You know, I mean, no one can be that bad, <laughs> uh, you know, on purpose. You can't act that stupid. How do you so, feel about the wife? <laughs> we? uh, well, from what I read, she's a racist, too. <laughs> I mean, well, that, well, yeah, that she was kind of his right-hand man with the apartment buildings. And, you know, I, 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 it's, it's, it's unlikely in, in a marriage that long that they would have very differing political views. It's, it's rare when you find a Mary... Matlin, James Carville yeah. kind of marriage. Usually husband and wife are aligned on those kind of issues. So I don't think she's some sort of outlier in this. I think she's guilty too. I've never asked you this in all the years. And I have been interviewing Bill Maher oh, since 1980. Gosh. 79, 80, he'd work in Washington and come on my all-night radio show. He was a regular. Not 80, Larry. 90. 90. Nine. I think the first time I was on was when I was on Politically Incorrect, which is early 90s. No, you were working a club in Washington. Really? Yeah, you were. It was in the 80s. You were, may uh, not have been Garvin's? 80s. That club in Washington, yeah, D.C.? Oh. My producer, Pat Piper, loved you. And he said, you got to have this guy on. Wow. Bill Maher. See, so... Isn't that sad? You have a better memory than I do, Larry. That's... <laughs> it really is. In all these years, I've never yeah. asked you this. Why, <laughs> in 2014, is yeah. there still racism in America? I mean, what's stupider than not liking someone because of the color of skin, which they have nothing to do with? What is stupider than that? Well, I mean, people... Why know. would you... How could anyone with half a brain... <laughs> I don't know why I'm the one who has to answer this well, question. Well, because you're I mean, the genius. Yeah, I'm the genius. You know, uh, you know I'm, I'm the one who's always saying America 
America's stupid, and then people get mad at me. How dare you say America's <laughs> stupid? And they say, well, I can prove it chapter and verse. You know, 60% <laughs> of the people think Noah's Ark story is true, <laughs> literally true. I mean, I, I, how are people stupid? Let you got me, everybody on. Let birds. me count the ways. I mean, I mean, racism is, is obviously fused with a lot of different things. Some of it is just lizard brain nonsense. You don't look like me, I hate you. Uh, some of it has to do with economics and class and the way rich people are able to use things like race to divide poor people. You know, it's very easy to get people distracted from the issues that they should be thinking about by pointing to race. That Mexican's gonna take your job. Well, that Mexican is probably not going to take your job because as it's been proved over and over again, John McCain said it once, <laughs> you can't do it, my friend. You can't pick <laughs> fruit in the sun all day. White people have tried and they wilt by lunch. All right, other areas. The congressional investigation into Benghazi. Yeah. What do you make of the Democrats are saying that this is a, a phony thing? Well, it is a phony thing. It's been a phony thing from the beginning. I mean, it's a tragedy, but not everything bad that happens in the world is Obama's fault. Of course, that's their, always their template for everything, is to work backwards from Obama is evil, Obama's a socialist, Obama's a screw-up. Somehow, he's simultaneously an evil genius and also <laughs> completely incompetent and, and just terribly dumb. So it depends on what day it is. Um, our, as funny, at the end of our show this week, our little editorial is about uh, we're egging the... Uh, Democrats, uh, the Republicans on to impeach him because I think that would be very good for Obama if they would go ahead and impeach him. And I would like to challenge the Republicans. If Benghazi is as awful as they say it is, and let's get real, they're investigating it for the eighth time. Almost half of Republicans in America say it's the worst scandal ever in American history. Absolutely. Worst scandal ever. So if it's really that bad, then isn't it your obligation to impeach him? And that would be great because that would fire up the left wing base. So I'd like to see the impeachment go for it. I'd like to see them put their money where their mouth is. I'll be back with the one and only Bill Maher right after this. Do you think that's partially racial? At least partially, absolutely. I think a lot of this country has never gotten over the fact that we elected, a, and not only just elected, I think what really blew their minds was re-elected. You know, the first time they could kind of, okay, everybody experiments. <laughs> the second time really bothered them because it's like, wow, America got a real good look at a black president and went for it again. That, I think, psychologically, was the most damaging thing that's happened to them vis-a-vis -vis Barack Obama. That they hmm. wanted, that they, people saw him and still voted for him. The return of Monica Lewinsky. Yes, I defended her on the show last week. You know, I read the Vanity Fair article. I was very moved by it. Um, this is a person who has basically spent almost 20 years now in infamous person prison. Um, she can't get a job. That's, she says, you know, every time she goes in, they make some excuse. And we understand why, because it's a distraction. Um, probably You're very has, bright. Well, she went to the London School of Economics. <laughs> I never met her, but she does make a great point, <clears throat> which is that uh, she said, if I'm so stupid, how come my first job out of college was working at the White House? Also, I kind of got on mm. people who I think are hypocritical about getting down on her for the affair as it was. Now, she was in her early 20s. I don't know if you remember back that far, Larry. I barely do, but girls, I remember. girls at, in that age, that's the experimental age, yeah. like college age, early 20s, late teens. So that's when they're having sex with people they have no intention to stay with. You know, and that's okay. You know, sex is not harmful if you, you know, take precautions and so forth. So while other girls are having sex with, you know, I don't know, the bouncer at the club and this <laughs> idiot who lives next door to them in the condo, and she's having sex with the president of the United States. Not bad. And talking with them. She says it was an actual relationship. There was intimacy shit, yeah. there was communication, there were gifts exchanged, promises made. Um, so, you know, the whole world is looking for five minutes with this guy. And by the way, this is when Clinton was in his 40s. He was very robust, he was virile. So she's having sex with the hottest guy in the world. 
and her first job out of college is in the White House, but she's the moron. <laughs> you know, I mean, it looked like it was a fun relationship to Lynn the Cheney got a hold has, of it. Lynn Cheney suggested that the Clintons were behind the Lewinsky article, that they had Vanity Fair publish it to get the story out of the way. You buy that? Well, it's a bit of a conspiracy th theory. I mean, it, it wouldn't be the strangest thing I'd ever heard of in my life. Uh, it makes sense. Yeah, you do so kind of want to inoculate it's yourself. It's not a bad idea. It's a good no, political move. But, but Monica's point was, you know, why now? Because Hillary is most likely going to be the ne next president, and maybe for eight years. And, of course, if that happens, then she's going to lose another 10 years of her life. So, come on. Let's How about a moratorium? 20 years is a long time to be in. Yeah. in well, the Christian ethic is to forgive. <laughs> forgive <laughs> what? What did she do? <laughs> I know. You know, just let her have a life. What do you make of <laughs> the Nevada rancher, uh, Mr. Bundy? Cliven Bundy? He is, is face off with the feds. Well, lots of the right wingers love this guy. Until. Until. Uh, of course, the relevant point is that they shouldn't have loved him to begin with. He's a scoff law. <laughs> you know, he, somehow they're the rule of law people. <laughs> Except Why did they what? like him? They liked him because he thumbed his nose at the federal government. And as you know, Larry, the federal government is always evil and needs to be drowned in the bathtub. And so somebody like Clive and Bundy, who, who does not let the revenuers from the government push him around, he is, of course, a hero, except he's not a hero. He's a guy who didn't pay his grazing fees. And by the way, uh, those people who are mad that the government owns so much land, I'm glad the federal government owns that much land. Because what would the other people do with it? Probably ruin it like they have with the rest of the country. It's, that's why the federal government owns a lot of land, so we can preserve our national heritage. It's all our land, and, and some of it needs to stay pristine and unpolluted. These that's... idiots now in Utah who want to drive their ATVs into the land just because we say we can't dr Yes, let the ecosystem live somewhere. That's so logical. <laughs> what does the logic ever work? Oh, worked? please, Larry. <laughs> we now move to the world of politics, which you shall do. What does Bill think about the who might be the GOP nominee? That we'll look at that whole field. And does he think Hillary's automatic? That's when we come back. We're back with Bill Maher. Don't forget, if you're in Indianapolis, He'll be at the Murat Theater on May 31st. What's the matter? You mentioned, I can mention. Right. Oh, I'm glad you do. I think, I don't think it's pronounced Murat. What <laughs> else? Murat? It's M-U-R-A-T. How else Murat, would you? I think. I, no, I don't, don't know. pronounce I, the I don't, T. Whichever it is. Okay. I, I'm funny no matter how it's pronounced okay, you're right. when you get there. You are a When very, you get to the theater, like, boy, this guy pronounced the name of that theater badly. He's but a great boy, was it a great show. He's at the Coronado Theater in Rockford, Illinois on June 7th. And, of course, can't miss, he can't hosts mess that up great Rockford. show on HBO. The Rockford Files. Real right time, there. yeah. Real time with Bill Maher. That's Every right. Friday night, a must, and they repeat it 7,330 times it's in my during the week. Chris Christie, does he have a future? Uh, yeah. <laughs> in garbage removal. <laughs> uh, I don't know about politics. No, I think he has a future. I don't know. Um, I think, you know, we did something about the fact that he should have run in 2012, because the longer you stay on the vine, the more likely something like that is going to come up. Obama was very smart. Remember when he ran, everybody said, how can you run? You've barely been in the Senate. People don't even know who you are. And he went, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly the point. They don't know who I am. If I wait around another four years, they'll have more you. to pick at, more votes to use against me. And Chris Christie, if he was smart, should have run in 2012 when he was still had that new candidate smell. Of course, and, he could be <clears throat> indicted, you know, if they... Yeah, it's, it's looking worse and worse. Yeah. Because, of course, when the press doesn't cover the really important stories, the TV press anyway, but, boy, when they get their hooks into something that's scandalous, they will just root and root no and matter dig who you are. and dig, no matter who you are. That's right. That's the fun if stuff. you think the press is democratically liberal, a liberal does something like this, they're going to ax him, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Come on, there's it's, no prisoners. That's right. Okay, um, a lot of people are saying the best race would be Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton. It would be issue-oriented. Uh, it wouldn't go into the where you'd fall asleep. Well, I wouldn't <clears throat> fall asleep, but we're talking about two centrist, corporatist-type people who are going... A little left, a little right. A little left, who are not really going to n move this country off the track it's on. I can't see 
either one of them doing anything bold, like demanding a carbon tax. You know, if you pick up the paper almost any day of the week, there's something really, really scary and frightening about the, with the, where the climate is going. And I don't see either one of them. And, and of course, if you look at the polls, the people in America, these geniuses, don't even have it on their list of top 10 things to be worried about. So it requires great leadership. I think it's obviously the most important issue of our time. It requires great leadership. I don't see it coming from either a Hillary or a Jeb Bush. Do you see it coming from anyone? Yes, I think somebody like Elizabeth Warren, one of the most gutsy people I've seen in politics in a long time. She's somebody, I think, who would really say what she feels, and she may not ever win anything, but um, I'd love to see her her run with Hillary. How about that? A granny ticket. <laughs> <laughs> How about Rand Paul? Rand Paul, I, like his father, I like half of him. <laughs> you know, half of him makes so much sense and says the things that nobody else is saying. Uh, let's end the empire. Nothing in the Constitution says America has to have an empire. How about droning? Let's bring the troops home. He's well, again. droning is different. Droning you is favor droning? You attack, you love the Fourth Amendment, you favor droning a citizen well, without a trial in another country? Well, I, you said droning. In droning about a citizen, that's a different issue. Oh, that's what Rand American Paul has meant. But entities. also, I, yes, I do favor it. The, the citizen we did drone, I was in favor of that. Just because you're a citizen of America, that should not serve as a shield to you if you are attacking Americans, which that guy was absolutely inspiring well, I can say just because there's a Fourth Amendment, don't say stupid things in private. <laughs> well, that, that's a very different reading of the Fourth Amendment. We're talking about if Don Sterling in his living room had been talking about bombing the White House, I would have a very different view about, about the But he still was taped, and you're against the taping of him and making it public. I mean, you gotta be, you can't have it both ways. What, these are two different issues, Larry. I can have it two different... Well, they're two constitutional, aren't they? You can't kill an American citizen without a trial. You also cannot use the Constitution as a shield if you are plotting against American citizens. It's something very different to, to be spouting off about whether your girlfriend brings a black guy to the ball game is a little different than what Al Anwar al Awlaki was doing, which was inspiring people and plotting to kill Americans. And that should not be used as a shield. As far as droning goes, um, I'm sure we could do the droning program better, but I was never in favor of invading Iraq as a way to fight the war on terror, which is really the war against Muslim fundamentalism. Um, but you have to do something. I'm not for doing nothing. So using whole armies against terrorists is a very bad idea because that's not who they are. They're small bands of people. How do you win the war on terror? Well, you don't ever win it. Right. It's like crime. There will always be some crime. But there are some people in the world who do need killing. And drones do that better than armies. We killed, we killed how many Iraqis when we sent over the army? Well, a lot of them killed each other, but hundreds of thousands, at least 100,000. We haven't killed anywhere near that number when we, when we use the drones. Uh, was it you that said the botched execution, execution in Oklahoma? It wasn't botched. They killed them. Botched would have been well, was, if they didn't kill right, them. That was pretty right. funny. What do you make of the whole death penalty issue? I, that is the craziest situation because, first of all, <laughs> this is a country that kills so much. We were just talking about droning, gun violence. I Texas. Mean, Texas alone, <laughs> right. I mean, killing is what we do. The fact that we have this, this issue with killing people, I mean, we're overthinking in this. I mean, Kim Jong-un must be like, what? Put them, <laughs> put them in a pit with a wild boar. You, you, you people are thinking too hard about this. Why don't we just, look, here's, here's, we know how to make people fall asleep, right? Get Michael Jackson's doctor in there, okay? He used to know how to do it. <laughs> Once you have them out, just kill them. And any of the ways we know really do work. Shoot right. them in the head, <laughs> a guillotine, electrocute them, firing squad, it doesn't matter. Once they're out, why do we have to like, have this idea that we have to nudge them just ever so slightly into death? Like we're Humanely. not really it's doing it. Like, humane. You know, it, it's not humane no matter how you do it. You're killing them, okay? <laughs> so this whole idea that we have to have this cocktail of drugs, the f it's like the razor, you know, the first blade lifts the shape. The first drug kind of gets you sleepy, and the second one puts you out, and the third one, you know, tr you, it's like you're on a massage table with Nora <laughs> Jones playing in the back. It's insane. Knock them out and kill them, or just shoot them. It's not a big thing. Do you favor the death penalty? Uh, you know, I always have, in principle, it's just that we don't do it well enough. 
You know, there's too you many. You favor it in principle, though. Yes, I mean, I, I do favor it in principle. I just think uh, there's too many people. I think our justice system is too screwed, glued, and tattooed. Blacks and, are blacks are executed, whites are not. Well, I mean, that's part of it. There's a racial element, and there's just this incompetent element to it. You know, that there are probably some innocent people we've put to death, but I, I think I would, if it was me, I would rather be put to death than live in solitary for 70 years. I mean, we put people in solitary. That is truly cruel and unusual punishment. Oh, yeah. If you, to be alone year after year after year. We, do, you, we used to do this very, very sparingly. Now we do it all the time. And, and that is the, I think, the, the issue that they should be talking about with prisons. One of your favorite subjects is marijuana. You've long been an advocate of its legalization. It appears Strictly on the way. Strictly theoretical, Larry. Ob Ob <laughs> Obama said the other day that uh, marijuana is no more dangerous than alcohol, but he quickly stressed that he does see pot use as a bad habit and a vice. Well, you know, he's a politician. He's got to add that, but it's but not. But medical, how about for medical use? Well, of course, for medical use. I mean, talk to anybody who's uh, used it for medical reasons, and they will tell you that it very often provides a solace that nothing else they tried but does. But that, that's coming everywhere. But, there's, but we don't have to use that excuse anymore. It doesn't have to, we don't have to have the fig leaf of, oh, I'm using it because I have this whatever it is I told them I had. How about just because we want to? Because of all the drugs, of all the mood-altering agents you could get your hands on, this is the one that's, that's least harmful. And also, again, a freedom issue. How about that for the Republicans? Where's the Tea Party on this? They're supposed to be the people who love freedom so much? What could be more a uh, cause for freedom than what, ha than what happens in your own head? How you treat what goes on in your own mind, the mood you want to put yourself in. So I think it's an issue that the Republicans could steal if they were smart. It's another issue where Rand Paul probably could take votes. Yeah. Rand Paul could be interesting because he, with his views on uh, privacy, his views on bringing the troops home and no more empire, his views on stuff like drugs, he's pretty good on race issues. He said some interesting things. He could steal millennials away from Hillary Clinton. I don't think they're that anxious to vote for Hillary. Are you shocked, as many are, as how quickly the gay issue has changed in this country. More Americans favor same-sex marriage. A football player is drafted, he kisses his partner on television. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how did that happen so quickly? Uh, the gays insisted. But it, it, is, it is amazing that it was only maybe 20 years ago that the closest thing to a gay marriage was Liza Minnelli and David Guest. <laughs> Remember when they were married, that was a gay marriage. I was invited that way, I didn't go. <laughs> you didn't go? I didn't go. What a shame. <laughs> um, and yeah, they just, they just insisted. And of course, the other thing I think that turned it around was television. You know, people don't really read the news. They don't pay attention to the president that much, but they do watch television. And once they saw gays on television shows... Wow, they said, look at this. They were like, oh, okay, you know what? It's not that weird. And then, of course, gay marriage in a couple of states, and the world didn't fall apart, and they kind of got it. Um, as think... recently as 2004, Bush, remember, put the Karl Rove put gay marriage on the ballot in key states yeah. just because he knew it would get every redneck to come out. And while they were in the booth that of course vote for Bush and those were all people who were scared that gay marriage was gonna screw up their life somehow. I know you are a critic of, of organized religion. You made a great movie called Religiosity. Religious. What do you make of Thank the, you. Yes. the Catholic Church and the hullabaloo and the attention played to canonization? You mean making this John Paul II a saint? A saint. Yeah. Two saints. Two saints. The, the John, Pope John and, and Pope John Paul. Right. Well they need some good publicity. You know, after the unpleasantness, Larry with the little boys. You think that was... Well, I mean, they kind of fast-tracked Pope John Paul. I mean, oh, you know, boy, he yeah. got it. You need two, you know, you need two confirmed miracles to be a saint. And he got his two in five years, which is, you know... I'm just saying the man works quickly after he's dead, Larry, because <laughs> that's very quick. I mean, other saints, it's taken hundreds of years. But John Paul II, he just rolled up his sleeves and got those miracles like how do you quick. know that there's no afterlife i mean i no I, one knows no one knows no one knows we're that's so, not i've never said i was 100 percent sure we don't know what happens but um you know 
what I'm, what I, what I'm pretty sure of is that it's not the myths that were described thousands of years ago by people who knew nothing of science and which people still, to their intellectual embarrassment, still cleave to today. I doubt it's that God had a son. You know, he's this orb of perfect energy, powerful beyond our imagination, but he's got kids. <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing it's not that. Uh, so, you know, we don't know where, it, you know, I watch that show Cosmos, it's a great show, science show every week. He's brilliant. He's, Neil, Neil deGrasse yeah. Tyson, yeah. Uh, and a great uh, explainer, oh, you know, the for best. the masses. And, you know, they go into the first episode, I think they did the Big Bang Theory, which is the entire universe, that's not just every planet, every star, every, every galaxy, was in something the size of a marble when it exploded 13.8 billion years ago. And when you hear that, when you hear that everything in the universe, all the planets and the stars and the suns were in something the size of a marble, you kind of want to go, yeah, give me the Jesus thing. I, <laughs> that, that's just, that's even crazier. But, but I know they're right. Thank you, Bill. You're always the best. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. It's you great to see you again. Agree He is one of the funniest and more incisive people on the planet. We thank him for joining us on this edition of Politicking. For my viewers out there, I want to hear from you. Join the conversation on my Facebook page. Share your thoughts on Twitter by tweeting at King's Things. Use the Politicking hashtag. That's all for this week's Politicking. Bill Maher.